All right, so we'll call the meeting to order. 603. Our clerk isn't here. She was sick, but she'll, she said she's going to watch it. Okay. And just so everyone know, we are broadcasting live on ECAT, and this is being recorded just so everyone's aware of that. Um, so I'm just going to take a roll call. All right, I'm present. Ken? Yep. Nancy? I don't see Nancy. Jackie? I don't see Jackie. Dave Field? Yeah. Joe? Yep. Dan? Here. Here. Jamie. Is that what is James? Jackie's here. Jackie is here. And Alicia. I don't see So we do have a quorum. That's good. So we'll start uh, as far as the approval of the meeting minutes. I sent those out. Um, hopefully everyone had a chance to look at those. Did anyone have any uh, questions or comments or concerns about the meeting minutes from October 4th, 2022? All right, hearing none. Uh, do I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Allison. Second. Stevens. All right. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. I agree. Ken? Yeah. Agree. Here, Jackie? Yes. Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. All right, Dan? Yes. All right. Oh, there's Lisha. How are you? I'm well, how are you? All right. And Jamie? Yes. Yeah. All right, so uh, Lisha is here to take the brawl. All right. So, moving right along, I don't know um, who would like to just give a quick update. I don't know, Jackie, you're probably the best one as far as the early elementary school. Just a quick update on the project. Sure. Um, it's going well. Are we? I can, I can jump in if you want. Uh, sure. So we have uh, we had electrical inspection today. Everything went well, passed. We have building inspector, line, uh, building inspector walkthrough lined up for the leave tomorrow. It might be Thursday, I'm not positive, but today or earlier than we are expected. Um, we're looking to get that temporary certificate of occupancy, um, which is going to allow um, the teachers to come in and start setting up their classrooms. Uh, we have the move going on right now, so we're bringing all the belongings into the building, setting them up in nice, neat rows in the classrooms, out of the way of everything. Um, we and really the big thing that was the issue we was holding everything up was the abandoned uh, tank. It was pumped, uh, flow filled today. I believe they're going to be able to get the top piece off tomorrow, put the water structure in, and tie that road in. So those are the big things. Um, but no issues right now. We're really heading out of the, the top part right there. Sure. So everything's on schedule. Right now, yeah. We no, no issues with, uh, right now, no issues with anyone coming in next week uh, on that TCO, and then no issues that we're foreseeing for students in January. All right. Anyone have any questions? Walter, good. All right. Moving right along. Uh, Dave, you want to just give us a quick update on the water treatment facility? Sure. Project? So um, the Red Mill Road uh, water treatment plant uh, is coming along nicely. There's actually steel uh, building going up on top of the foundation, which is great. Uh, that project is about 25, 20 percent complete um, construction-wise to date. Uh, the three PFAS treatment plants are also coming along. Uh, that's about 37% complete. Uh, foundations are in and they're starting to uh, get ready for the, the buildings themselves and the, uh, the units to be delivered uh, this winter. All right. And as far as the one on uh, Red Mill, when, when's the estimated completion date on that? Uh, it's going to be uh, next year about this time. So uh, it's, it's a full year out. About November? Yeah, I mean, we will look probably January of 2024, okay. but uh, about a year from now. All right, any questions for Dave on that project? All right. Um, and how about on the town hall restoration? Uh, town hall restoration is just kind of in the punch list mode. We're waiting on a few things, uh, on some change orders we authorized 
towards the end. It's about 87% complete right now. Um, so hopefully we'll wrap that up soon. We're waiting on storm windows and things like that to come in. Um, that well uh, off in the lawn area uh, is being uh, rehabbed. We're waiting for those things to come in as well. So. Yeah. Drove by the other day. It looks nice. Yeah, it came out nice. Definitely, yeah. Definitely a big improvement on the front. Any questions any for Dave on that project? All right, so why don't we move right along to the public safety project update. So I don't know, Greg, are you gonna leave? Well, Walter, I'll let well, you guys take the floor. I think I, I, think I have the first few slides yet. All right. Um, so quick update on timeline. Uh, we're progressing right along. We've hit all the milestone goals. We're still targeting that, um, Schematic or in schematic design, we're targeting that April 23 Municipal Building Committee vote to approve the project scope and budget. So we'll be developing uh, plans and getting those off to the estimators uh, in time for that. And then uh, moving right along, just kind of a graphical representation of, of where we're heading uh, in early 23, and um, that local approval likely sometime in the summer of 23. Uh, schematic design highlights of. Uh, this phase of the project, uh, estimating is going to be in March, so those plans will be developed just before uh, end of February and getting them over to the estimators. Uh, be reviewed with the NBC um, to lock in that scope and budget, it's very similar to the MSBA process. Uh, April of 23, we're going to reconcile the estimates with any potential VE. Uh, we know that uh, with the budget, there likely will be some, some VE looked at by this group. Um, and then April of, again, in April, end of April of 23, we'd be looking for, uh, to approve the schematic design package. So we're targeting that for April 25th date. Um, and then April, May of 23, that critical public outreach period. And then June of 23, the local funding authorization. So right now, everything's on target. Um, I know you guys probably haven't seen a lot of work product yet, but there is a lot of work going on. And I know Greg's gonna get to that um, a lot with his presentation. So. Yeah, and so I, I think, Walter, one important thing to uh, point out here is the two meetings in April. Uh, and, and what that, you know, is trying to do is on the first meeting, uh, give the committee a chance to see kind of the overall project scope, where the estimate numbers came in, what that does for budget, and be able to kind of, you know, understand and absorb that information uh, before we come back uh, to ask for a vote. Uh, in order to get um, us completed by, you know, that April, May time period to, to give, uh, you know, the committee and, and the town the ability to go do all that outreach that I think has been successful to this point, uh, was successful in the school project. Uh, that's really how, how the schedule falls. So those, those April dates are an important uh, kind of milestone for us to make sure we, we make our way to them. Uh, give everybody here on the committee a, a, a deep understanding of the project and be able to kind of guide the project forward uh, to the second date and um, and you know uh, have a project that we can approve and send back out you know to the town for approval. Uh, so uh, it's it's a lot of meetings uh, I know, uh, but uh, it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about a bunch of really boring things, and and I apologize uh, in advance. I'll try to make it as uh, light as I can uh, for those of you who don't study the uh, building code on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, there are some pretty significant changes that we're you know, expecting in the new building code um, as it comes into effect. And so the new building code uh, comes with a new energy code. And it, kind of what the time frame is here is in 2008, Massachusetts approved the Green Communities Act, and I'm almost positive that Easton is a green community. 2021, there was uh, the 2021 Climate Act, which set uh, emissions goals for the state. Uh, so a 30% reduction, or sorry, a 50% reduction by 2030. Uh, so to hit those targets, the state has to do something, right? They don't just, this doesn't just happen on its own. One of the ways the state is doing that is to, um, increase the energy efficiency of buildings. Uh, pretty simple concept, uh, a lot more complicated in, you know, making it happen. So to do that, uh, DOER, so the Department of Energy, 
has taken over the energy code portion from BPRS, the Department or the Board of Building Code and Standards. Regulations. Thank you, Brian. Um, right, and so and so it's kind of a change in who's uh, driving the code for the energy portion of the buildings. So part of that 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 process started in 2021. Uh, in July, they they kind of set out the targets. Uh, in December, they uh, promulgated a special opt-in code, uh, or they will promulgate a special opt-in code, which is kind of a, a, a zero fossil fuel free code, and there's some other things going on that some towns have opted into. We don't fall into that uh, yet. Um, hopefully, uh, we can get this project through before we end up falling into that. Uh, but we do expect by January of 23 that there'll be a new base energy code in place. And so when we look long term into the project schedule, it's more likely than not that our buildings will be permitted after that code goes into place. Uh, so the, the, the important date is the date the permit is pulled, not the date it's designed, not the date it's built. It's the date the permit's pulled. So more likely than not, we will be in that new code for the for both building code and energy code. They kind of go together. Uh, so, so that should help us get to that 50% reduction in emissions by the 2030 date. Uh, and so, I'll keep this kind of you know high level. And these are just DOER's slides. I'm stealing them. Uh, you know, they they did kind of a straw poll of like how do we get there out to the design community and, and others in the kind of the, the building space uh, and they they did a draft code so uh, June to August of this year they they published a draft code uh, which summarizes kind of the work that they've done to this process they allowed the public and, and members of the design community to provide feedback and input there was a significant amount um, and we now have what is uh, more or less the final version of the code uh, so that's out in draft form it's not promulgated yet uh, but it is in draft form, so we, we have started to see and understand how we're, you know, how we're going to get there and what's going to be required. I think the how we're going to get there is a little bit uh, still up in the air. What's required is becoming more clear. Uh, so they're doing all this fun stuff on uh, kind of understanding where the greenhouse gas emissions in buildings come from. They looked at a number of different kind of uh, building types. Uh, and I, I'd say the most um, uh, closely linked to the project we have here is kind of large office buildings. Uh, they're, they're much different, but based on what they kind of looked at, that's probably the closest. They looked at, you know, small offices, large offices, uh, office lab buildings, which are, are, are a bit different, uh, elementary schools, high schools, uh, and then high rise and, and all other multifamily housing. So. Those were kind of where they used that. Those were the project types that they used to set a baseline and get an understanding of what we were doing now compared to what the new code requires. So that's just kind of like a setup on, on some of these next slides. So uh, they've broken this into two kind of sections of the code. One is the residential code. We won't talk about that. We're not doing residential buildings. Uh, the other is the commercial uh, stretch code. So green community, Easton's a green community. We are a stretch code community. So that means uh, there's the base energy code, and then there's a code that is uh, more restrictive or, or uh, better performing than the base energy code uh, that we are required to follow in Easton. Uh, so uh, in the base energy code, there are kind of two paths that will apply to this project. So the first path is for small commercial uh, projects. So that'll be um, the uh, fire substation at Daly's Corner. Right, it's less than 20,000 square feet. It's about 12,500 square feet. So uh, that will be kind of a prescriptive approach uh, building. Uh, we could end up doing kind of the second one uh, for it, just as we kind of work our way through the project. But in in theory, right, that's a the smaller project. We can do a prescriptive approach. It tells us to do something in the code. We do what it says in the code. We comply. The other buildings, the public safety building and the DPW, are larger. So they're over 20,000 square feet. So now they fall into these lower categories. So what's most likely uh, the case is that uh, the school and offices category uh, is what will fall under. And that requires either a thing called TEDI, 
which I'll explain in a second, or passive house. Uh, so there are two different approaches to hitting an energy goal. Uh, the kind of how the sausage is made in those things are my problem, <laughs> and I'll explain what they are, but that are, that's really our path to comply with the new energy code. Uh, so just Teddy, so thermal energy demand intensity, it's basically how much energy the building systems use. So forget the plug loads, we're not talking about toasters, we're not talking about car lifts, we're talking about building, pro, you know, building systems and what energy they use per square foot. Passive house is a different approach, right? A passive house approach, a passive house is, a, is kind of a, a rating system, Dan, jump in if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a rating system, but it's also a theory about how to build a building that uses no energy and, and you know, essentially it's a super insulated building. These two things do more or less the same thing. They're just different approaches on how to get there. Um, again, Dan, if you disagree, feel free to jump in. They're just really different approaches on how to get to lower, much lower energy usage. So it just what this means, it's, it's really a, a amount of heat you're generating in a year. Uh, the benefits to this Teddy approach is that it's, it's looking at non-plug loads, it's looking at only the building system loads, things that you can compare evenly across projects. When you get into plug loads in buildings, it tends to fluctuate a lot, right? Different owners, different occupants do very different things in different buildings, so you have a really hard time comparing projects to each other, where this isolates those things and only really focuses on the building system energy. Uh, so, and I'll just point out here, so, and this is the, like I said, this is kind of the closest category that they, we kind of fall into. So the blue is uh, currently what the code requires. This little orange spec down there is what the new code will require. So if you're using fossil fuels today, the reduction is like a 92% reduction from current code to the new stretch code. So it's a, it's a pretty significant reduction. And that's not total energy, right? Because we're not talking about plug loads. We're not reducing those plug loads, which are still a big part of your, your, your energy usage. But the building systems, it's a, it's a really big challenge. So. Greg, just one question. That's lighting too as well. That's lighting. Okay. That's, that's all, yeah. That's yeah. all the kind of, if, it, if you turn the building over and it doesn't fall out when the light pulls fixtures. out, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's what it's for. So in, in kind of separately, but tying into this, there are some incentives that have kind of come up recently. So, MassSave, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, Ever, uh, National Grid here, we have, uh, I forget who's gas here, National Ever Source now. It's changed, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, right, so, so we qualify for these MassSave rebates. So, this is a new program out within, I'd say, I don't know, the last four months. Uh, with some pretty significant energy rebates. I'm showing you one path here. There's three different paths. Uh, this is probably the most appropriate uh, one for this project, but we can have a, we'll have a whole big meeting about this later. Uh, in this path, um, it, it's looking at EUI, so a, a little bit different measure of energy, but we're still talking about energy usage in the building. If we hit tier one, which is a 25% below the energy the base energy code requirement, uh, you get a dollar twenty-five a square foot incentive. Not bad. We have big buildings; they're not huge buildings, but that's not bad. Where things get better is the heat pump adder. So, if we use heat pumps, and there's a number of different categories of heat pumps, there's air source heat pumps, there's variable refrigerant systems, and then there's geothermal, so ground source heat pumps they rebate those by the ton. Particularly, the variable uh, refrigerant flow systems, the VRF systems, and the ground source heat pumps have very attractive adders to this rebate. So, um, you know, ground source heat pumps is $4,500 a ton. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty significant adder. There's a big upfront cost with that, with ground source heat pumps, but this at least takes some of the curse off of that upfront cost. So 
these things kind of all are going to play in to how we get to the right answer for energy usage for the building. And, and after this, we're going to talk a little bit about sustainability and rating systems. So um, schematic design phase is kind of where we start this, right? So we're in the phase where we start this. So the first thing we're, we're going to kind of do is identify the project goals, right? Are, are we going to be net zero? Are we going to be all electric? You know, are, are there any, uh, you know, drivers from the town side, from the owner's side that get us into a category uh, that may change our initial assumptions. Uh, the second is look at uh, system options. So we're going to identify, you know, with the, um, you know, the staff, Dave's staff, uh, the different system options, get their experience, get what they like working on, uh, you know, and, and kind of vet those systems out to come up with three real options that we can take and consider first cost, operating cost, maintenance cost, and, and the maintenance effort, right? Because it's not just all about cost, it's how much effort you have to use to maintain those systems as well. You know, the incentives that we just talked about, and the complexity, you know, how, how complex do you want these systems? The more complex, the more control you have, the more, you know, kind of uh, nuances you can have within a building uh, by space by space. But the more complex the system gets, those upfront costs go up a little bit. More importantly, that kind of operations and maintenance goes up a little bit more. So it's, it's really a balancing act, right, of getting everybody in the building comfortable, getting the cost right, and getting the energy performance all right. So we have to balance all of these things, plus like a list of 25 more that our engineers uh, listed off today uh, to get to us, you know, three real options that we're going to compare and, and what that'll give us is a life cycle cost analysis that tells us, look, not only are there upfront costs to this, there's a, a whole life cycle of the building cost to this. When over the life cycle does this system pay back compared to a base code system? So if we, if we say the base code is the, the, the kind of least thing we can do, how do these three options stack up against it? What is the best choice for, for Easton for this project? And, and, and it might be a different answer for each building, frankly. Uh, so, so that's kind of the process we're going to get into uh, in, in the coming kind of month, two months, uh, to get us to that answer where we have a formal life cycle cost analysis. We can sit down and look at it, and, and you can all kind of digest that information and see, um, you know, where not only the energy lies, but where the dollars lie, both up front and long term. Um, now we'll talk about rating systems. So I've told you that we're really improving the energy systems in the building by significant amounts. For rating systems, and I'll talk about LEED because that's probably the one most people are familiar with. There are dozens of these different rating systems, all of varying degrees of complexity and I'd say value. Uh, but you know, LEED is a holistic rating system. So it's not just looking at the energy though energy is probably about 35% of kind of the, the points within LEED. Uh, maybe a little bit more depending on how far you go with energy. So, you know, you're looking at, you know, reducing the co contribution to uh, climate change. That is energy, primarily. Uh, enhancing individual human health. So that's indoor air quality, things like that. Protecting and restoring uh, water habitats and resources, I'd say we have a pretty robust uh, protections in place in, in Easton. Uh, you know, this isn't something that we're going to go and uh, fill in wetlands or, or, or do things like that in the town just based on your cons com and, and your existing, you know, policies and procedures. Um, I'd say protect and enhance biodiversity and ecosystems, that's a bit more complex of a topic that I don't think we'll get into too much. You know, promote sustainability and recycling materials. Uh, these are things we do as a general practice at this point. Um, so, so the the value add there, those are kind of the low hanging fruit we like to call them. We can get those those kind of points pretty easily, uh, and and we can get them on almost every project we do. Um, and then enhance uh, community quality of life. So, uh, again, you know, providing uh, community access to buildings so they have multiple uses. These are things we've already talked about, we're already doing in the project. So easy to probably get those points. 
uh, but it brings up the question of whether you know proceeding with a real rating system and, and getting a project certified is is in the town's interest um, I, I would suggest and it's a suggestion that the energy increases that you'll see in these projects um, just based on new stretch code uh, is a, a far bigger impact for you and the climate globally than a lead rating. I'd say that a, a lead certified building is a, is a pretty easy get based on the new energy code. We're probably going to be somewhere, so a, a, a rating, a, a certified building is, is, sorry, 40 points? 50 points. 40 points. Uh, and Silver's 50. Yeah, Silver's 50. Sorry, I, I got the 50 yard yeah. line on my, uh, so, so, so certified's 40, we'll probably get just based on, just energy, just for the energy systems, we'll probably get 18 to 20 points, depending on exactly how things lay out, uh, just based on the energy, because we're gonna be near, and I'll say near net zero, we're probably not gonna be net zero. So um, the, the added cost and the added effort for this, uh, you know, may, be desired or may not be desired. I would suggest that the the stretch code really gets you so far along in, in getting this that we can do a lot of these things and, and already are going to do a lot of these things without having to go through the whole certification process and and, and kind of spending some extra money. Um, I, total transparency: when you certify a project, there's a third party entity coming in looking at the submissions, looking at the data, and verifying that you did what you said you did. That's the benefit, right, is that you, you have some other entity other than, you know, PMA, other than KBA, other than Weston and Sampson, verifying for you as the owner that, that we did what we said we were gonna do and the contractor did that we said we were gonna do. Uh, but there, there's some cost there and there's some effort there uh, that, you, you know, you should just think about whether that's the right uh, way to go or not. Yes, cost for certification, and then there's costs uh, built into the bid numbers, and uh, that would be yeah. across three projects. Yeah, so three so, so there's, there's additional costs for the design uh, professionals, <coughs> there's costs associated just with registering and certifying the project, probably uh, it, it's by square footage. square footage, and I probably building time. Can't, can't do the math in my head right now, sorry. Uh, but it, you know, I'd say it's probably in the order of ten to twenty thousand dollars, something in that range, uh, to certify the building. Um, it could be a little bit more. I haven't paid for one in a little bit. Um, Just one question: like, the new school does that have a lead accreditation? Required to be lead certified to get your reimbursement yeah. trimester. What, and what level was it? Silver. It was It'll silver. Be, uh, minimum silver. Silver. Yeah. Okay. Let's. I think we're targeting around fifty-two, fifty-four, fifty-six. Yeah. Right, right in that fifty range. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, look, it, a lot of these things we, we will do just as a matter of good design practice at this point, um, but I, I just wanted to bring it up and, and talk about sustainability and, and what the different options were. We don't need a decision tonight uh, by any means. Uh, this is kind of a discussion will be part of the, the yeah. focus goals for sustainability for yeah. them. Um, but just so everybody got the chance to understand this information and see it, uh, it I think it's an important topic. Um, and so now a little bit more fun. I promise I'm done Do with the boring. Ask if anyone has any uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. So before yeah. we we move on, does, uh, are there are there questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? The rebates you get the one time. Was it one time? Um, the tier two rebates are one time. If we went to tier one, which is, I'm trying to describe this, how they describe it. It's, it's basically net zero ready. So it's, um, it's an EUI target. So an energy usage intensity target. Um, those have an option for the first year after substantial completion they have like an energy audit that they'll come back and do. They basically look at what your your modeled energy usage would be, and they compare it to you, your actuals at the end of one year, and there's a, a, an incentive at the end of that one year. This is a completely new program, and 
based on the building types we have, the complexities we have, I would say we're not comfortable that you'd be ready, like within that year period, the systems take a little bit longer than that to shake out. And so hitting that, that one year energy usage in that first year is, is a really hard thing to do. Um, again, we'll, we can re-examine that project by project. Fire substation, that may make a little bit more sense, but it's too small to qualify for that program, right? So it, it gets a little bit more complex, and I, I don't want to give a half-baked answer, but uh, potential it's, for a two time. It, it's it's a it's it's really tricky. I haven't again. This is a four month old program, so there hasn't been any there haven't been any buildings go through this and get it. So uh, we have a little bit of time, so we can see what happens out uh, in the industry and market, and, and see how it goes um, we're with other be projects. On the forefront of this program. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. We're we're yeah. There 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 are there will be projects ahead of us uh, because anything that was in schematic design four or five months ago, kind of, they, they kind of rolled them in. Uh, so like uh, like Diamond, for example, will be in this program. So uh, so I, I'm not exactly sure how the schedules are going to align. We'll see. Um, Can you go back to that slide? I just went to look at it. The one uh, that actually had the numbers that, that the camera said. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so if we hit tier one, you know, even if you hit tier two, it's 50 cents less per square foot, but still not bad. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the heat pump adders. It's it's though that's where a lot of the money is. So it's both. Yeah, you get so Combined. so the incentive is is this, and if you just did a regular like a regular VAV gas fired system, you wouldn't get any adders, but you may get the first one. If you do one of the heat pumps, which I'm going to suggest, based on the new energy code, we're going to have to use one of those systems anyway. Um, we get these adders, um, so. Uh, it, it, in, in, in this is a project that's probably three times the scale. So in, in, in Diamond, because I'm going through it right now, so uh, 400,000 roughly square foot uh, folk tech school. Uh, the base incentive is about $500,000. The adder, because we're doing so much geothermal, is about $2 million. Where, um, where would the substation DPW fall? <sighs> That. Uh, second category office lab office uh, so this is this um, this has a whole different okay. this is completely separate than this okay. yeah. so they're they're two separate things they just happen to like kind of correspond and come out together um, because the people who do this also have yes. a big hand in this <laughs> so so they're kind of tied together but they're, they they measure different things this is measuring site EUI so site energy usage <clears throat> intensity so how much energy your building uses inclusive of plug loads and exclusive of any on-site renewables reduced compared to what uh, it is the base building code, and I, they, I can't remember exactly how they define that. Uh, I can't remember if they tie it to a specific ASHRAE 90.1, a specific energy code, or if they just say the base. I, I'd have to go back and check. Um, I, so for for Diamond, it's it's based on the current energy code. So we might, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to shake out. The, this is the heat pump adder capacity. This is how you uh, calculate the adder. Uh, it's it's a very kind of specific calculation. But this this program, right? You can't do a less a less efficient system and then get your efficiency by uh, solar. You know, kind of kind of wind the meter back with solar. That's not allowed under this program, so it's 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 exclusive of the solar. You can't count that backwards to reduce your energy down to this point. It's driven by the power company. I guess. <laughs> it's driven by the power whatever, whatever company. Whatever benefit you get from these programs is applied to capital cost. Uh, I would say that is a, a town decision and not an architect decision. <laughs> is there an expiration date or a cap on the rebates? Um, 
the programs start and stop. Uh, the process for enrolling in these programs is basically um, you have a meeting with them, you sign a memorandum of understanding, that memorandum of understanding is non-binding, it's pretty easy going, it's we'll cooperate together. Um, eventually when you, when you get into design development, uh, so when we get past this stage and you have a real project, then you'll have to enter into a contract with them. Once you enter into that contract, you're kind of like locked in. And so that program, even though that program may like sunset, you're still in the program and you'll be fine. Inevitably a new program will kick up and that's what happened before. There was a, there was a program before this. It was similar. I'd say this one is uh, better for Easton uh, and better for everybody. Uh, based on, on these kind of heat pump adders, those things didn't exist before. Before it was a, a little bit more like, let's look at your light fixtures, okay, you know, you save, you know, we rebate you $50 a light fixture or, or you know, each piece of equipment had kind of a dollar rebate assigned to it. This is a much different approach. It's a holistic approach to reduction of energy. I think on um, one of our last, I think we got like, like $23,000. Yeah. It was, it was, not a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Or it was a drop in the bucket. Yeah, I mean, I... I like a standard mass save. Yeah. Yeah, standard Like a, a Minuteman... 150,000 square foot building. Yeah, yeah a Minuteman, we had 250,000 square feet. I think it was $75,000 or something like that. It was... This is, you know, a, this a much... This is going to add up a lot more. This is a yeah. much better incentive, I think. Uh, and, it, and it drives you to a goal uh, instead of just saying, well, we'll just pick some more efficient equipment. Greg, can you remind me who the mechanical engineer is on this project? GGD. Okay. David says hello. Um, are they doing plumbing and fire production? They are not, sorry. Uh, ACAL is I plumbing. I just said mechanical, but... Yeah. I, know. I but, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so uh, ACAL is plumbing and fire protection. Wait, are they? I don't know. It's <laughs> been a long day. That's all right. So, do you already have three systems that you're going to run the LCCA, or is that, are we still kind of looking? No, I'd say we haven't really, I mean, yes, there are three that are probably most prominent. I'd say we haven't had the meeting with Dave and his staff to kind of vet through the details of that. Um, GGD was the mechanical engineer on the elementary school as well, so, you know, I, I think they're familiar faces in town. Um, no, they not leaving. Uh, fine with me. Um, they are plumbing and fire protection on this one. I'm pulling up there. Right now, let's see. Yeah. Uh, yes. HVAC is GGD. They are everything. Yeah, they are everything. Oh, yes. That's Sorry. That's a lot better. Preferred. Yes. Yep. Preferred. I like that better. But Sorry. The plumbing and the fire protection is what it is. It's not a lot. It, there's the, the plumbing, there's some energy systems in the plumbing, hot water, research pumps, and stuff like that. But it's not, compared to mechanical, it's, you know, nothing. Um, so when you when you envision, we'll be looking at those numbers and making a decision on the mechanical system. Uh, so I'd say, like, December, we'll start meeting with, you know, Dave and his staff to kind of vet through, all right, we're, we're looking, you know, this building, we're going to look at, you know, air source heat pumps, it's small, it makes a lot of sense, but we're going to need, you know, in the apparatus bay, we're going to need some makeup heat, what are we going to do? We're going to do hot water, we're going to do gas fired, you know, what are kind of the options there? We'll work through that stuff in December, you know, January, February timeline, we'll start to kind of run those, those analyses, come back to the committee and, and be able to, you know, present kind of at a high level what the system choices are, and then we'll get into a little bit about the energy usage. So we'll things. probably be looking to put a focus group together for MEP systems. Uh, yeah. I, um, in the next couple weeks, um, we'll reach out, and I think what we'll do is we'll grab the names for who are gonna be repeat or from DPW, and then if anyone on this committee wants to be part of those focus groups, and, and hence time, the meetings will probably be during the day, they'll probably be virtual. It'll probably be boring. <laughs> probably boring. Probably is virtual easier. Yes, it's, it's probably it's probably it's probably so it might easier, be easier so. for some people who do want to yeah. jump on. Yeah, and we can hold them either way, but virtual to tends to set up to that that focus group for MEP. We'll probably set up a few other sure. ones. Yeah. MEP is probably the most important one in sustainability to get. 
Yeah, I mean, I, they're really tied together. pretty closely together. Um, probably just call them one. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we want to talk about uh, different things, uh, we're happy to do so. Uh, but so much of the driver is the energy in, in all of the sustainable rating systems at this point that uh, unless you're going like well or, or something that really focuses on in like indoor environment, um, the energy is the big driver. Yeah. So much longer will gas even be an option, I know, because California has now set a plan for no longer building it. And you can't do residential, right? I mean, any of homes in California, I'm wondering where it so, so part of that pilot code is there are 10 communities that have signed up in Massachusetts to uh, have a fossil fuel free code. So no oil, no natural gas, it's all electric buildings. Um, it's likely that these will be majority electric buildings, if not all electric buildings, um, just based on the way the code is written. Um, the the code anticipates greening of the grid, right? So the greening of electrical generation, which is right now pretty dirty, it's anticipating greening that, lowering the greenhouse emissions pr to produce energy. Therefore, the electric is much greener than natural gas on site. Currently, natural gas on site is a little bit more efficient if you consider grid EUI. This is complicated. No one wants to talk about that. Yeah, I know. Sorry. No, no, no. It's important. It, 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 it's it, important right. to talk so, about. So, so site EUI is energy use intensity on the building. Grid EUI is how much energy it takes to get you the energy, energy. plus how it's developed. How, how it's developed and things like that. So, so, so what? What's what? Your guy, to your point, we're not. Yeah. People aren't talking about. They're going around saying heat pump, heat pump, heat pump. They what? don't tell you where it comes from. Yeah. Well, in, in the heat pumps, the heat pumps are really efficient, right? And and they're and they're great. And, and as long as you know you design them correctly and they don't break down, they're great. Um, when they break down, they're kind of annoying. Uh, but they they are really efficient, and power wise, they're not terrible. Um, where you get a little trickier is when you get really big buildings and you need to move hot water around. And that's why that geothermal adder is so big. When you get into really, really big buildings, and, and I'd say we're not in really big buildings with these projects, we're close, but when you get 250, 300,000, 500,000 square feet, there's too much refrigerant in those air source heat pump systems to really kind of do it. You can do a lot of it, but doing everything is, is not really possible. You have to recirculate hot and chilled water to, to heat and cool air or do direct fired you know, gas systems or do resistance electrical. Resistance electrical is really expensive and it's not very efficient. Um, so, so those are kind of the trade-offs. Like we've done all electric buildings. Semrec is an all electric building. Uh, we didn't feel like bringing gas up a mountain, so <laughs> that was kind of out. <laughs> um, Right, but it's a it's a it's a bit different than a DPW garage with you know twenty overhead doors, trucks rolling in and out in the middle of a snowstorm at zero degrees. Semrec is not geothermal. Semrec is not geothermal. Semrec is a, a, a VRF system. It, it's just air source heat pumps, uh, some resistance electrical heating for for supplement, but uh, and redundancy. Uh, but um, cold, you know, like what's the because heat pumps have? I know they're getting you can get what. Out of air down yeah. Zero, below zero. Uh, so yeah. So the new ones with the cold air kits are like negative nineteen degrees. Okay. So like they're they're pretty robust. For this area. Yeah. For this area, they're yeah. fine. Uh, we're doing them. You know, we did them at Semrec. They're nice because they're backed up by emergency power systems. Flip on the generator, which by the way has to be fossil fuel driven currently. So uh, that will still be fossil fuel driven by diesel at you know, at least the music, well, at, at all three buildings, just just generally. Yeah. So we're not getting rid of it entirely, but you know, yes, it's it's a good question, Jamie. Thank there you. are 10 towns already filled up that slot. Please don't join, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> the, energy, the way the energy code going right now is that it's almost like soft banning gas, yeah. because 
the, the buildings are becoming so efficient and the gas load is getting so low, like that Eversource won't, or National Grid won't even bring gas to new buildings now because it's just not worth it for them. So I've had projects where gas was being an option because they said, so not making money. There's not enough. Yeah, they're not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna make enough money off this building because we're running one tiny thing. So you're gonna be all electric no matter what. So I, that would be my assumption going forward, is that we're gonna be mostly all electric. I was on the phone with Dave for like two hours prepping for the meeting and he's like I don't know it's probably going to be mostly electric you know it it may be some gas fired boilers moving hot water around uh, to, to temper air other than that most of the systems will likely be electric it just it's just kind of how things are going with this energy code the what that Teddy thing does and because and, miraculously overnight we're gonna we're gonna promulgate this code the mechanical systems are not going to get that much more efficient just because Massachusetts promulgated this code, right? So, so what we'll, we're going to have to do is, is the architects have always put this off on their consultants. Now it's coming back to us. We have to significantly improve the building envelopes. Windows are going to get more efficient. We just put a lot more insulation into the building. It's, it's, it, it's tricky to do technically. But the concept isn't that hard. You just insulate it better. Um, you still have to ventilate and move new our air, but it does cost a little bit more money. Yes, Walter, I know. <laughs> um, you may have triple glaze windows. We're going to do some other things with air curtains and things like that to try to keep, uh, you know, those big open bays in in the DPW and the, in the apparatus bay and the fire and the uh, sally port and the police from getting <coughs> cold air pulled into them. You know, with these flushing air curtains that keep the air separated while well, you can still drive the truck through because we have to do that in these buildings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's that's kind of some of the things that are going to come. Again, this is in draft. We're still digesting a lot of this stuff. It's not in final code version yet, but it's coming and, and we're, we're trying to prepare for it now instead of react to it later. So was that boring enough? Sorry. <laughs> a lot more interesting. So uh, just uh, quickly, I want to just kind of give you guys a glimpse into the progress that's going on behind the scenes so you know that we're actually doing work. Um, <laughs> so uh, just a reminder on the site locations, this is the, the option you selected right here on Depot Street. Kind of This is what we had uh, shown before. This is what you've seen, uh, public safety up front, DPW in the back. Uh, so uh, this was the original concept uh, that we looked at on placement of the DPW building. And we're looking to now kind of like fine tune the site planning, kind of look at orientation a little bit more of the buildings because we do have this fun new energy code coming and we want to kind of limit the energy the best we can based on the uh, orientation of the buildings. So we're looking at just kind of turning the building a little bit, uh, just reshuffling the site a little bit. We were, we were really, really close to that 10 acre limit here uh, and we want to uh, buy ourselves a little bit of wiggle room uh, you know, we want to come in a little bit under, like, you know, hitting lead silver with 55 points. We want to give ourselves a little bit of a cushion so that if something comes up along the way, we have a little bit room, of room to expand if needed. So we'd like to come in somewhere around nine and a half acres to the project line. So we have about half an acre if we, if we need to kind of shift some things around and, and, and work with it. Uh, so that is kind of part of what's going on here. We're starting to kind of like fine tune the traffic flows around the site, um, you know, shift the orientation, rework the parking, uh, move. Uh, you know, if you remember here, we had this kind of the gas uh, filling station kind of out in no man's land, uh, starting to consider moving it back uh, into some alternative positions uh, closer to the DPW, uh, make some things a little bit less expensive wiring conduit and all that fun stuff out to there uh, give the DPW a little bit more kind of surveillance of that area uh, passively uh, just to you know keep things uh, in sight um, and, and here you'll see I used the wrong slide title uh, Weston Sampson has started to kind of lay out the interior of the DPW building so uh, over here in the yellow kind of the office uh, suite uh, in the, the middle in the green, kind of the uh, um, 
different shops, shops and apartments. Uh, and then the big repair bay uh, down the end, which all the way down the end is the wash bay. Uh, the two bays closest to the wash bay would be the repair for the fire department. I can kick it to Brian if, if you want to jump in, please. Yeah. Uh, and then as, as you kind of circulate around the building, uh, this big large volume here in the back is the fleet storage. So uh, that's all of your vehicle, that inside parking that we talked about. And, and Brian, if you want to talk about the canopy a little bit, maybe you can kind of talk about that. Yeah, and you can currently see we, sh we show the park and it's kind of a one-way drive-through, especially for these large trucks. But we right now, we do have plenty of parking for all the vehicles and um, equipment. Uh, this canopy is also very useful for, um, you know, storage of equipment that, you know, is better to keep under cover versus being within um, heated space. One thing that's nice about this fleet storage, and, you know, we're also digesting this new code as well to deal with, you know, a lot of the things that are DPW related, but, you know, we kind of usually keep this at about 50 to 55 degrees, so it's, it's a minimally kind of tempered space. A um, couple other things, too. That we have to look at. We typically do um, a radiant floor in the mm -hmm. vehicle maintenance, so that's something we may need to look at too as well. So there's a there's a lot of things energy wise, but um, you know we kind of like to do something very similar, like the um, we do like a clean boots, dirty boots, kind of similar to what you guys do. So if you kind of think about it, this line right here is kind of the clean part of the building, and all the way over to the left is kind of we call it the dirty boots. So, um, yeah. So, so that so far that's where we're at. It's our first pass at it. We're still kind of working on it with Dave. So, and then we we provide as many mezzanines as possible. We find this is very good to um, you know store tires, store castings, all sorts of tools above here. So each shop usually has their own mezzanine, one for the uh, maintenance, and then we usually throw one in the um, vehicle storage. And I can't. You, you, you got a, a couple of you guys went to one of them, but typically, you know, trucks can still park under these mezzanines as well. Mm. So, um, you know, they're very useful. Yeah. So similar to, I think, what you guys saw in, in I mean, Mansfield. So this looks pretty yeah. similar to it's, Mansfield. It's, it's, it's a very similar yeah, setup. Uh, uh, I'm not going to pick on Brian, they're but they all, they all look a little bit similar. <laughs> <laughs> fire, fire stations look Fire stations, fire stations similar tend to look a little <laughs> similar, too. Uh, but, um, you know, the thing is, a lot of these buildings are very um, truck circulation driven yeah so um is there but everything we heard from mansfield uh, i mean they loved it yeah. so so any, any initial comments on layouts questions well on <clears throat> no it looks like just from walking through mansfield it's very well nice uh, this when you shifted sense. the building where did you pick up that extra half acre if you needed to expand which way would you expand? uh so what portion of the building would so you we don't, so it's not about building expansion, it's more about site expansion. Okay. I think the the building expansion, you know, if you ever needed to expand the buildings, I think the, the impact wouldn't be that big. Uh, these are so purely, more site, more yard. yeah, you know, if, 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 if we, when we go do soil testing, if we need more stormwater management than we had originally thought, or, or, or things like that, where we have to expand some fields, or Mansfield kicks you out of the sewer system and we have to put a, you know, the weird things happen in projects. We just don't like to be right up against the line. Um, you know, on, on a line we can't move. Uh, th there is no opportunity to get more land on this site uh, without a, literally an act of the legislature, I think, uh, which uh, I think will never pass. So uh, I'd say this is it, so we want to make sure we have just a little cushion just in case something that we don't know about comes up. And that could be, in theory, anywhere, Jamie. You know, it, it can, the site is all one parcel, so where the 10 acres are was never defined, so we can kind of move that. We just don't want to be, you know, counting inches, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to the final as bill survey. Yeah, and actually one thing since we're doing the site is we've done some preliminary site investigations and obviously, you know, environmental was done here when it was turned over to the town. But, you know, right now we don't really know the final sizes of the, you know, bio swales or any sort of above grade retention basins or do we go half above grade, half below grade. You know, it kind of gets expensive to go below grade, but then you're using, you know, space above. So there's still a lot of things that we need to kind of dive into. Um, 
No septic here, though. So. Yeah. Oh, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. At what point do you delineate those wetlands? I don't know. Uh, so I think some preliminary work was done. Yeah. So I, I think five. Uh, the 524. Dave, when you did the 524 study, that those wetlands were, were flagged and yeah, delineated. I think we did do some yeah, as, as, yeah. as part of our survey, we'll go back, you know, yeah, delineate you them yeah. Yeah. And, and, and survey them again. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty clearly defined and the setbacks are pretty far. Uh, we have room to move around near where we kind of, you know, we've placed the building kind of away from the setbacks. Uh, so we're just moving around parking and roadways. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so you know, it, it's it's not. There's some wetlands, but they're not uh, overly concerning on this on this parcel or on either parcel, I'd say. And he's been carrying that set for ten years. I was gonna say that's a uh, that's impressive. Just what pulled it right out. Is that parchment? <laughs> no. Um, and so the public safety, I'd say, is the, probably the most complex building. Um, so this is the one that's kind of lagging the furthest behind. It has the most kind of like tiny little programmatic pieces. Police officers like tiny little rooms for some reason, <laughs> lock people up in. Um, so so it, it's a lot more complex. It's a two-story building. It, it, it just has a lot more going on, so it's just less developed. It, it has two departments in it. Uh, you know subsets of each department it, it's a pretty complicated uh, design that we're working through uh, but we're starting to kind of place things mass things out see what that looks like and it's not going to look like this i promise um <laughs> just we're starting to move around masses in the yeah. building and, and see what it looks like on the site and make sure that when uh, we we go to create a building out of it everything kind of tends to work so we're still in process there and then the Daly's Corner, uh, which is the fire substation, is, is a bit more simple. So uh, fire stations all tend to look a little bit alike. Uh, this is sort of loosely based on a model uh, that we did in Acton. Uh, Acton had a geothermal system. It's uh, close to net zero building. We'll see how it goes um, in terms of actual performances. But programmatically, it it's very, very close. And, and uh, working with Chief Alexander, we've kind of tweaked the program a little bit, tweaked the building a bit uh, to get us uh, kind of quickly to something that we can have fairly developed uh, for, for estimating purposes for SD. It's not going to look like the Acton building, it's not going to be the Acton building, but programmatically it's about the right size. The orientation and layout, as Brian said, fire stations tend to look about the same. You have a big apparatus bay, you have a bunk area, you have some uh, kind of that that kind of cleaning and, and, and storage of their gear in the middle. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just a small uh, area for meetings, uh, for uh, exercise, and, 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 you know, living in the back uh, with some, some programmatic pieces across uh, that kind of take care of their uh, operational needs on the, on the firematic side. So um, it's, it's a, a, a really uh, good thing to be able to jump this project ahead to jump the uh, or this building ahead to jump the DPW ahead a little bit while we you know keep developing that public safety option so uh, just kind of where we're at it's a snapshot in time these aren't uh, final designs by any means and uh, uh, we'll, we'll you know as we develop them we'll start to bring these back to the committee uh, in, in you know more cleaned up in, in a pre, you know presentable format but we know the this kind of beginning of SD phase uh, as we've said before, it feels like things are going really slow. They're not. It's just it takes a long time to get to a point where they're ready to present. Okay. Questions and questions and answers. Questions, comments. Questions. And One question. Tomatoes. By the timeline, you had um, appropriation June twenty-three. Yes. Is that supposed to be a town meeting appropriation? Wouldn't that be in May? Yeah, so I think they're talking about a, a special, special meeting, a special so meeting. The, the, you know, the BAA was done, yeah. um, just its own, own meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, when a project of this size goes to town meeting, uh, Warren articles, usually you're successful if you're under 15 minutes, I think, in a, in a regular town meeting. Uh, if you're much more than that, they tend to not be 
overly successful in our experience in a special town meeting uh, when the, the, the docket is limited uh, there's a little bit more time to talk about yeah. that but ultimately it's it's a decision for the, the, the select board to make that's what we're looking at. that's what we've been speaking about yeah, like the gift to the school yeah mm -hmm. very similar I would think yeah, I mean, it, it, the project is of uh, a very similar size, if not a little bit bigger than the school project, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I would just yeah. slightly larger. Yeah. We're, one, we're 148 over there. Yeah, so we're 160, 60, 70, 120, and then 12. So, yeah. Yeah. So, just in terms of square footage wise, it's they're yep. they're pretty close in size and uh, dollar wise, it's obviously going to be uh, significantly more just based on you know three buildings, two sites, and a uh, massive amount of escal escalation over the the duration time of time. Yeah. Yeah. I had a question, just and maybe it's Walter's public outreach. Obviously, that worked well for the school. You know, there's a lot done there. Is there a plan? Is that something we're going to be involved in, or is that something we'll Connor or? Absolutely. It's going to be everybody. Yeah. Okay. Is is there any thing lined up just yet? Or? Nothing lined up okay. yet. Um, I think we need to. What we really need to do is get to that um, stage where we have our estimates and our floor plans and building models really yeah. more concrete. Right at this point, right now we'd be taking questions that we don't have the answers to yet. Oh, sure, I know now. I was just wondering if we're putting something together, like nothing, a plan. Nothing yeah, I mean, I, that can be a, yeah, I think we should put it on the agenda to talk about what is the plan and, yeah. and develop a plan so when we're ready to Before go. we get there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so we, there's definitely some thoughts on that. I think Connor's got some thoughts and yeah, probably the side board have thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, so. yeah. folks from the, the school project, because that went very well, I would think, when it came to public government. I think we plan on hitting all those same events. They, they might not line up at the same time, so there may be other events that we can do. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, you know, it's fairly common, of, you know, kind of part of the process to go through public outreach meetings, just, you know, meetings specific to, uh, what, what, what you know, hosted, yeah. you know, by either the committee or, or you know, one of the boards in town uh, to, to present to the public. In addition, uh, as we did in the early kind of stages of this project, uh, going to those community groups at their kind of locations and, uh, you know, Vines Club. Uh, yeah, Furnace Village. Furnace Village, I was trying to come up with the acronym and I couldn't do it. Um, you know, uh, going to the um, Harvest Fest, uh, those things uh, tend to make a, a difference. And so uh, whatever is lined up on the calendar, uh, my my commute short, so it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm here all the time. <laughs> yeah. Walter lives here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Walter may be in town more than me, actually. <laughs> Any other questions? Are we good? All right. Well, thank you very much. That was very informative. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Yeah. So we'll be in, PMA will be in touch about that focus group, and we'll work with Greg and Brian on you know those focus group meetings for sustainability and MVP. <coughs> Yeah, just send it to the whole group. Absolutely. People can yep. apply. Certainly. All right. Um, the only last agenda item I had was um, municipal building inspections. As you folks know, uh, part of the charge of the committees is supposed to go to every building every five years and do a walkthrough. We did a lot of them, as Cameron remember, we 2019 we did. Mm -hmm. and, and when Dave was doing his assessment of the buildings, we did a lot of them. So. Uh, but I think we should probably try to schedule one. You know, there's still a couple out there. You know, because now we're getting to the point where I don't know. I don't know some of them we haven't done. When the last time those were done. So the one, th these are the ones that seem like we haven't walked through in the last since I've been on the committee. And, and maybe Ken, you can fill us in something before that. But as far as the schools, I think the only school we haven't done a walk through is the East and Middle School, because we did one, we did one of, of the high school. Um, I think that was either last year, I think it was last year. Um, do we have to do the new early elementary school? At some point, yeah, yeah, as we go along. Um, Which is Homestead? I 
interesting. We, I think some of us have gone through there for the roofing project. Okay. I don't know if everybody did, though. Um, but I had that. The other one I had was Town Hall. And I mean, there's some smaller buildings, you know, like the ones like the landfill and things. But well, the landfill's... I'm not sure we want um, to that's, that's to be torn down. So yeah, yeah. There's a, there was a bunch of small ones I don't think we're going to... But frothing, I don't know if we've done frothing. We did frothing him, yeah. We did a lot of frothing him. So... Um, what I was thinking is maybe since Town Hall was just done, we should do that one. Yeah, yeah we could see it because yeah. it's pretty much done. So I didn't know if we wanted to try to put something in December to do that. I mean, I would think if we're going to do a walk through the Town Hall, it should be during the day, you know, so we could see the outside. Yeah, um, I don't know if you want to wait till like later in the later in the winter or. But you're, you're I mean, if you want to, yeah, I'd like to, to try to get day if you want to see the outside. So. Yeah, I'd like to try to get one in before the end of the year. Yeah, oh yeah. Like we yeah. haven't really done one this year, to be honest with you. So I figure we might, we might want to do. It. Can we do a Saturday? I don't know how people felt about that. Because we're gonna have to do it during the day. Because we do want to see the exterior after all the work we just did. Maybe a so. Friday afternoon or something. Saturdays get tough in the December. In my my opinion. Yeah. But. How do people feel about Friday? Like late Friday, like a Friday afternoon. You know, like three o'clock or something. Does it? Anyone? Three o'clock. Yeah. Anyone? Does that sound like something <coughs> we could do a Friday at three? All right. Yeah. So why don't we? We could circulate some dates, but maybe we'll shoot for it. You know, not towards the end of December. Yeah. It, it maybe if we can't do it in the next few, then maybe we shoot into January. Okay. Right. Yeah. But why don't we? Well, the next one we'll do is Town Hall, and then we can hit some more. So January yeah. might be better. I mean. Season. Yeah, we'll just see what's going to... I'll send out to the group so that we can look at calendars, but Fridays are probably going to be tough. But I just want to get something on the books for that. We're going to be looking at a, a December meeting or because we're so late. Yeah, I remember. And then maybe first week in January for yeah. another, our next yeah, for NBC for public for public public no, Do you have a... I have the schedule up. Yeah. I, Chad and I tried to because we could try to combine it. We could always meet at the town hall. So we did that for some of our meetings, as you remember. You know. So maybe we, if you guys want to shoot for December, maybe we can parlay that into that walkthrough at town hall, and we can use one of the meeting rooms at the town hall. Save some time. Are you guys okay with a Friday at like three o'clock? Oh. Well, because what we're thinking is if, if we're going to do another update for this, yeah. we could do it at the town hall and you know, we'll do a walkthrough and then we can oh, right. do a meeting. So we were, we, if you guys are going to do that, in this, uh, we were just talking, trying to find where we had our next uh, NBC meeting or specific public seat. Because um, if not, we'll just well, stick with that. So we're, we're only looking at two Friday options, right? You're looking at the 9th or the 16th, because you're not going to do the 23rd. Yeah, it's going to be honest with you, it's going to get tight. 16th, and the next question is, do you guys really have anything in two weeks to bring it back together for? No. No, probably. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Don't push them on the January. Yeah. 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 yeah, why don't we look, why don't you just see what you have in January? Thirteenth or the twenty seventh of January for an update. 
Basically, you get a holiday weekend for 13. Oh, it is? Yeah, 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 I'm even looking at there. Let me see. Yeah, MLK, yeah. Oh, yeah, 27. That's where we're headed. How about the 27 based on everything we just done? I know, you oh. just said, uh, that's two months from now. Well, the sixth, if we wanted to pull it closer. I'm trying to work off of what, if on yeah. decisions that. Yeah, sorry, let me just. I can reach out. Well, we can throw it back out, we don't yeah. have to. But why don't we just plan on something in January? Sure. If, we're gonna try to do a combination meeting. Yeah, and. We'll if, do a walk through and we'll, you can do an update. Yeah, and if the later one works better for the committee, then yeah. we'll schedule that and if, I'd say, Walter, if we need to get something on the books beforehand because we need a decision made, I'd, you know, reach out. say we'd, we'd reach out, Walter would reach yeah. out and, and see if well, we could get I'd say, why don't we just look at the 6th and the 27th and those are the two days. Sure. Okay. For that, try to do a combined meeting. I think that would just save some time. Yeah. All right. Any other new business? Anyone have any, any new business? No, so good. Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? So move, Stevens. Stevens. You have a second? I got it, Craig. Anyone want a second? Second. That? I figured I'd get at least a few. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. I'll uh, just go through. I, uh, yes, Car uh, Ken? Yeah. Yep, good. Thank you. Uh, Jackie? Yes. All right. Joe? Yes. Dan? Yes. Yeah, Jane? Yes. yes. All right, that concludes the meeting. It's 7.15. Thank you, folks, for attending.